Thanks everyone for uh, getting that all lined up. Let's start to have a look. I'm pretty excited because so much of this course, as I've mentioned many times, has built up to this idea of calculus. And all you've done at the moment is differentiation, which is literally just dipping your toes in the water, getting your hands on the brushes, but not actually painting very much with them. So that's where we're starting to break into in this topic. You might remember, uh, actually I'm not sure if it was mentioned explicitly, but the name of this topic is geometrical ap applications of calculus. Uh, geometrical applications of differential calculus, I should say. Okay? So because it's geometrical applications, that is why so many pictures are involved. And um, that's a bit of a change from series and sequences, which was mostly algebra. Okay? So if you recall on Wednesday, I think what you were looking at was behavior of a function, and here's the, cl the important idea, over an interval. So what we thought about was when you differentiate, you get f dash x, you get dy on dx, right? But what that is, is the gradient function. That's what it means. It tells you over a given interval, are you going up, you're going down? So we introduced language for that. Do you remember that? When we say a function is going up over a particular interval, we say that it is increasing. When we say it's going down, we say that it is decreasing. And when we say it's neither, it's not going up, not going down, we say it's stationary. It's not moving up, not moving down, it's just where it is. Okay? So behavior over an interval is this language, but we in calculus know that we can actually do more than just say rise over run from here to here. We can somehow do rise over run at a single location, even though there's no run. That's what limits allows us to do. So while behavior over an interval is what you were kind of focusing on Wednesday, what we want to now think about is behavior at a point. Okay, so that's what we're going to drill down on in this lesson, and that's what these three circles are about. Okay, so you remember, thinking back to this, right, it really depends on your derivative and its sign, positive, negative, or neither. Okay, when you're positive, we know that's increasing, when we're negative, we know it's decreasing. What I want to focus on today is what happens when it's zero. Okay, so we said stationary, right? So this is a very important phrase, and this is going to be our central circle here if you want to label it. We want to talk about these objects called, not stationary over an interval, but stationary at a point. So unoriginally, we call them stationary points. Stationary points. Okay. Now, there are lots and lots of different kinds of stationary points, and that's why there's so much stuff on this um, diagram. We're not going to fill in this entire diagram today. I'm only going to show you part of it, but it's going to tease out some ideas that we're going to meet over the next uh, week and a half or so. Okay? So, stationary points. What might a stationary point look like? Well, here's one. This curve, which might be a parabola, for instance, has a stationary point here, at its vertex, right? That there, we call a minimum because it's right at the bottom of the curve, right? It's the lowest that that curve can go. So this is a minimum. Likewise, if we turn this guy upside down, like so, Again, at the vertex, you've got a stationary point right at that spot. You're not going up, you're not going down, you just pause. And because that's at the very top of the curve, we call it a maximum. Now, this is not too bad. If that's all we had to worry about, then I wouldn't have such a big involved diagram. But by the time we're finished with this thing, it's going to get pretty busy. So to help you, maybe if you have another color there, I'm going to put examples of functions that fit all of these different objects I'm going to describe. Just going to put examples in another color. So for example, this is plus and this is minus x squared. These are our, our simplest functions that we can think of that have a minimum or a maximum for their stationary point. Okay? Now, because these stationary points are a spot where you go from up to down or from down to up, we say that the function turns around at that point. 
it turns around. So for that reason, these guys are not just stationary points, we also call them, here's your right hand circle, turning points. So those spots there can equally be described as stationary points because at that point they pause for a minute, then it go up or down, but they can also be called turning points because if you look on the left and the right, you find there's up, down, sorry, down, up, or up, down change happening, okay? Now, these are not the only kinds of stationary points. There are stationary points that do not turn. And again, we can use very, very simple functions to illustrate this. For instance, this guy here. What curve do you know, and it, this is a very simple example, that looks something like that? This is a cubic, isn't it? And of course, I've got a cubic that's going uh, upwards, so it's increasing, but I could just as easily have a decreasing cubic, right? Okay. So these guys, I mean, if um, I'm staying with my example uh, functions here, I guess these are plus or minus x cubed. Right? Now what are these things? Well they are still stationary because at those points there that I've indicated, the function is neither going up nor going down. It just sort of pauses for a minute and holds on. Okay? But what's actually happening, we have a new idea for this, we call this a point of inflection. I should say points because I'm going to describe a whole bunch of things. These are points of inflection. Okay. Now because these points of inflection at that point there, it's horizontal. If you drew a tangent, it would be a horizontal line. These guys are further called horizontal points of inflection. There we go. So, what have we got? These different kinds of stationary points, either you're at the bottom, you're at the top, or you're neither, you're somewhere in the middle. But the thing that all of these take into, um, the, all, the thing that all of these have in common is that the first derivative is zero. dy on dx equals zero for all of these instances. Okay? Now I said we weren't going to fill out this diagram today, it's just the beginning. So there's stuff over here. Right? Now just look at the Venn diagram, without, I'm not going to fill this in at the moment, without knowing what's in here, what does the Venn diagram tell you should be here? These are turning points that are not stationary points. Does that make sense? I mean that's literally what the spot in the Venn diagram means. Th th such objects exist and I'm going to tell you about them in future lessons. And likewise, if you have a look over here, there are objects that are points of inflection, but they don't have to be stationary as well. So we're going to fill these in in a couple more lessons, OK?